Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I've got another list video based on a suggestion I modified from a commenter about a week or two ago. They asked me if I had a top 5 list video for favorite superhero characters. I thought that this would be a great opportunity to explore my top 10 favorite superheroes and I have a book to showcase for each one. Anyway, thank you for the great comment. I'm super excited for this list. Before we jump in, though, I do want to shout out the channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking to pick up your own comic book collected editions, I highly encourage you to check them out. You can find a link for it in this video's description, and if you see something on the website you like, you can even use my discount code at checkout, The Comic Book Report, to save $2 off of your order. Please note if you do use my affiliate code or link to make a purchase, I will earn a small commission, but it's the best way to support this channel. Thank you so much for considering, now let's get started with my favorite superheroes list. Okay, to kick off my favorite superhero list, we're going to go with number 10, The Flash from DC Comics. Yes, I'm a huge fan of The Flash. I'm still catching up on all of the incredible runs this character has had, or characters really. I will admit I'm a fan of both Barry Allen and Wally West, but the more time that passes and the more comics I read, I think I am safely in the Wally West camp. To showcase The Flash, we're looking at The Flash by Jeff Johns, Volume 1. This is a Volume 1 of six paperback collections that collect this creator run on the title. Uh, it's also collected across three omnibus editions as well. Hopefully one day I could upgrade, but for now I have these paperbacks. Jeff Johns' run on The Flash is actually my favorite run on the character. I just really appreciate everything that Johns brought to, especially the rogues characters of villains. He really humanized a lot of the classic Flash villains, even Barry Allen's Flash, like Captain Cold. There's whole issues dedicated to that character, and I loved it. We have an introduction of a new Reverse Flash character in Zoom, and I thought that that was just so effectively handled. Um, I think Jeff really got to flex his comic creator muscles here. It's actually my favorite comic run by Jeff Johns I've had the pleasure of reading directly after Green Lantern by Jeff Johns I just think that that is a triumph uh, but I do prefer the Flash as a character and that's why he's made this list I'm not even sure why I like this character I think the nature of his superpower is just very fascinating and how that's artistically rendered across so many different uh, issues creators things like that I think can just be really unique I love how it plays with motion I love those colors and I think these characters are really compelling I think Wally in particular is so relatable and kind of an everyman character we've gotten to see him as a little boy and kid flash all the way up through taking the mantle for flash himself for so long so you really get to stay with this character in many ways it does remind me of like a dick grayson nightwing situation um, but i just think it's a fantastic character whether it's barry or wally and i know there are other flashes but these are just some of my favorites Okay, number nine on my list, we're going to be bringing up the aforementioned Nightwing. Yes, this is Dick Grayson, and he is one of my favorite superhero characters of all time. Of course, beginning his run as Robin for Batman, the kind of quintessential superhero sidekick character, he eventually takes on the moniker of Nightwing and becomes a hero in his own right. He has had a lot of great solo series over the years, but I think maybe none more popular than the one recently under Tom Taylor. I think that this got a whole new wave of Nightwing fans, which is really fun to see. I've enjoyed what I've dabbled with in the Chuck Dixon era and the New 52 stuff with Kyle Higgins. Really enjoy this character. I love when he pops up in Batman books as well. I just think it's really amazing to see this uh, this man who has a dark backstory similar to Batman, who's trained by Batman, and yet still retains so much of his own self, his levity, his humor, and he brings it to his own brand of crime fighting. I think Nightwing is amazing. I think his costume is stylish and cool. I love the black and blue. I uh, wasn't as much of a fan of the black and red during the New 52, just talking about the costume aesthetic. Uh, but yeah, just a great suit, really fun. Uh, to showcase it, of course, I'm looking through that Tom Taylor run here. This is Volume 1, Leaping into the Light. Um, really a fun run here. Uh, the art by Bruno Redondo is some of my favorite comic book art in a superhero book, uh, as far as recently read. Uh, really strong stuff here. I know this run is going to be coming to an end shortly, at least from the time of the recording, uh, but I've really 
really loved going through it. Like I said, I think Dick Grayson is just a phenomenal character. Um, I also really enjoyed when he took on the mantle of Batman after Final Crisis and Battle of the Cowl. Uh, I also really enjoyed Grayson when he became kind of a James Bond-esque super spy and tried to infiltrate a kind of crime spy espionage syndicate. Anyway, just a really great character. I think that he's easily on this list with good reason. He packs a lot of punch, and honestly, almost every comic this guy turns up in, it's just an enjoyable read for me. Really, really like Nightwing, like Dick Grayson, a fantastic superhero character. Number 8 on my top 10 superhero characters, we're going to be talking about Steve Rogers' Captain America. And honestly, seeing some of my favorite characters this low on the list just really shows me how many great superhero characters are out there. Because I consider Flash, Nightwing, and Captain America some of my favorite heroes, and the fact that they're so low on a top 10, wow. Uh, but yeah, this is Captain America, this is the beginning of the Ed Brubaker era on the comic, uh, this is Omnibus Volume 1 of a 5 volume set that contains the run, and on Honestly, this is my definitive Captain America. This is some of the earliest Captain America I had the pleasure of reading, and in my mind, nothing has quite topped this. I love it. We start with the Winter Soldier story arc, which for fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe film franchise, you might be familiar with that movie. It definitely drew heavily from this comic, but the comic bobs and weaves and really pays off longer-term comic book fans as well. I think the artists we have throughout this run are also just really prolific and interesting, but I like Captain in America. I like that he's so good natured. He has like a high sense of integrity and uh, just is a paragon. You know, he's really moralistic and I really appreciate that. I like that he is, you know, kind of an enhanced to like Olympic level uh, with the super soldier serum, but he doesn't have like crazy amounts of superpowers and yet he's right on the front lines. You know, he leads the Avengers sometimes, you know, and he's for all intents and purposes a man. And I think that that's really impressive. I love, like I said, his moral code and I also really enjoy the that a lot of his storytelling veers into kind of um, international spy craft and kind of mission-based stuff. I think that there's a lot of fun like geopolitical angles they explore in Captain America that make him feel a bit more than just the uh, tights and super heroic kind of uh, character. Not that he doesn't get uh, you know battles with just some really colorful arch villains and gets pulled into a lot of the mainstream Marvel fare, but I like that some of his books as well, especially his solo stuff, really can veer into just more straight laced uh, kind of crime, you know, like I said, spy thrillery kind of fiction. I think it's really good, and I think that that really is in front street when you look at runs, especially like Ed Brubaker's. It's absolutely fantastic. Easily one of my favorite comic book runs, and this is easily one of my favorite comic book characters. Number seven, the big gun himself, Superman. Arguably the most iconic superhero of all time. How can you not love Big Blue? Starting out in Action Comics number one, this really ushered in the real wave of superhero comics in my mind. Love this character, love Clark Kent. Honestly, a big reason I get pulled towards Superman as well is because I grew up, uh, you know, my teen years into college watching Smallville on the WB slash CW. Uh, it's the series that has kind of young Clark Kent growing up and becoming the Superman we know and honestly that show really just cemented me and just really got me burrowed into the mythos of Superman that was kind of my gateway of course the Chris Reeve Superman films as well uh, but it'd be years before I actually read Superman comics but at that point I was already such a fan of Clark Kent and Superman uh, that it was just a no-brainer and I really enjoy Superman comics kind of like Captain America I love his high moral code I do like that he has all these superpowers I think that finding him, fending off different villains to challenge him, it's just really fun to see what they come up with. I love that his arch nemesis is just kind of a human when he has so many superpowers himself. Uh, so having that as his foil, I think, just works with the character of Lex Luthor. There are so many great comics out there for Superman. This is one of my favorites, uh, Superman's Secret Origin. It is a retelling of Superman's origin, uh, but I just think it's done exceptionally well by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Uh, this is one that I might have to review on the future on the channel. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Uh, for whatever reason, too, Superman is a character who has a lot of uh, comic book origin retellings, um, but it's just really effective. I really, really enjoy that. And there are so many creative spins on this character, like Superman Red Sun, which explores what happens if he landed in Soviet-era Russia. 
We have Injustice, where he becomes kind of a dictator. Uh, we have the Superman War World saga, which I'm reading right now, where he's on a kind of gladiator planet. Just so many incredible uh, takes on Supermans or places they go. Anyway, an amazing character. Can't get enough. Love Superman. Okay, for number six, admittedly, I am cheating a little bit. I'm going to include a superhero team in the Fantastic Four. I guess for the purposes of this video, let's just say Mr. Fantastic. It's close for me between Mr. Fantastic and The Thing, but we'll go with Mr. Fantastic as my favorite superhero number six. Uh, but really, it's the Fantastic Four. And there are a lot of great team books out there. I'm not going to do this with everyone. I'm not going to do the X-Men or Justice League. I think at least with Fantastic Four, it is essentially a four-person team team, uh, but I do love the Fantastic Four to showcase their incredible history. I'm going to be looking at the Mark Millar and Brian Hitch omnibus that came out last year. Uh, there are amazing runs on the title. I am quite partial to the Jonathan Hickman era, but I feel like I've reviewed that book a lot. Uh, so I thought I'd flip through this one. I'm trying to also promote this book. I really, really loved it, and I've seen it uh, kind of maligned online or see a lot of people pass over it, but I really think it was worth the cost of admission. Uh, we don't have a huge epic narrative in this. We have a couple of great big scale story arcs. Uh, it's not like, again, Jonathan Hickman with one big payoff, but it's really just a couple of great little stories. Um, but beautiful artwork from Brian Hitch, especially if you're fans of his work in uh, like the Ultimates. It's a very similar style. Um, but yeah, love the Fantastic Four. I think for me, Marvel's first family, it's just a fun, dysfunctional team dynamic that's also a family and also a band of explorers. They're not just superheroes. They're also scientists. They also do so much more. And I really like that. And I think in the character of Reed Richards, I just think he adds something that's really not seen uh, elsewhere in the Marvel Universe, his kind of super genius and how he approaches life, his philosophies. Not that he's always correct, but I just like the way that so many creators uh, work with that character. Um, I think Jonathan Hickman did a great job exploring that character. I think that, uh, you know, I just really enjoy the Fantastic Four. They're a great uh, band of heroes, and I think that Reed in particular is just a really compelling character. I almost feel like his stretchy ability is kind of secondary to everything else going on with his super genius and the way he leads his team and family. Anyway, love the Fantastic Four. And kicking off my top five, of course, we have the Sentinel of the Spaceways himself, the Silver Surfer, Norrin Rad. And to showcase him, I'm going to be looking at this epic collection, Freedom. This was actually the first Silver Surfer epic collection I read through, and I loved it. Uh, I did continue to read some of these epic collections and went deeper into the kind of Jim Starlin era, which I also really love and have talked about. But this epic collection in particular really hooked me on the character in a unique way. I was familiar with the Silver Silver Surfer reading his stories in the Fantastic Four and some of his early solo run with Stan Lee. Uh, and I really like those runs as well, love those issues, but it was really the solo stuff I first read in this epic collection that absolutely uh, just bonded me with this character. To see this brooding, deeply philosophical character just unleashed in the universe, to see his kind of star-faring adventures, it just made me really care about him in a new way. I think that this has more of a science fiction feel than some of the Earthbound stories. And like I said, you just get to see uh, Norrin kind of spread his wings. I love his tragic backstory, trying to save his planet and becoming ultimately a doom bringer for the incredible Galactus, uh, only to be set free and become kind of a superhero in his own right. I think also because he's a cosmic or galactic uh, level hero, it just brings a lot uh, of something different to the Marvel Universe, and I really, really like this character. He's easily my favorite cosmic character uh, by far. I think no one else is close, and there are a lot of great cosmic characters, but I just love Silver Surfer. I feel like I can't get enough of this character. I keep trying to read what I can. Um, I really hope we get more omnibuses for Silver Surfer. At the time of the recording, we just have that Volume 1 by Stan Lee, and then we have, of course, the incredible run by Dan Slott and Mike and Laura Allred, another one of my favorite reads. Uh, but for this list, I thought I'd just showcase the epic collection that really got me first absolutely hooked on this character. If you've never read The Silver Surfer, but you're looking for something a little bit different, maybe you're a Marvel fan, but you want stories set outside of New York, I highly recommend just about any run you can find for this incredible character. Don't miss out on Silver Surfer. And hey, if you're still watching this video and you've yet to subscribe to the channel, I just want to invite you to do so. I'm always doing list videos like this, comic book reviews, unboxings, and more. Anyway, thank you so much for considering. Now let's keep going with this list. My number four favorite superhero character is the 
best there is at what he does. Of course, we're talking about Wolverine, bub. James Howlett, Logan, yes, the one and only Wolverine. Uh, to showcase this character, I'm looking at my Greg Rucka Ultimate Collection paperback. Uh, this collection is unfortunately long out of print, though you can probably find it on secondary marketplaces like eBay, things like that. I'm hoping this gets a reprint or maybe like a small omnibus uh, upgrade. I actually really love this run. Uh, this was one of my first complete runs of Wolverine I ever read, and I just really enjoyed it. In fact, I've done a video where the first issue of this is actually my favorite single issue of Wolverine. I just think it's haunting and amazing. Basically follows a young woman who is sort of menaced by life situations around her. And she has, unbeknownst to her, Wolverine as like a roommate. Doesn't know anything about him. But she's writing these diary entries and it's referring to him as this mean man. And it's almost like she's writing the diary entries to him as letters. Uh, and ultimately, something tragic happens uh, to her. And we have Wolverine reading the diary. And it's just really amazing. And it kickstarts this really high art Octane, really grounded uh, Wolverine run. Anyway, I dig it. But I love this character. I think reading him in the pages of the Uncanny X-Men and then all of his solo stuff, he's just such a unique character. He has such an incredible mix of this kind of samurai nobility mixed with just a berserker bloodlust. He has so much violence in him. He's so haunted. He has such a fractured backstory, and yet there's these weird like zen moments with him as well. He can be an incredible mentor, but absolutely ruthless at other times. He's like just a contradiction in so many ways, but it just works for me. He's the most effective anti-hero comic character that I'm a fan of personally, and I just, again, he's another character I feel like I can't read enough of. Uh, most recently, I read Predator vs. Wolverine. I also thought that was fantastic. I'll probably have that on the channel soon as well for review, uh, but yeah, love Wolverine. One of my favorites. My favorite mutant character, absolutely, uh, without a doubt. Yep, love Wolverine. Okay, I'm in my top three now, and things are getting really serious. My number three favorite superhero character, Spider-Man. Uh, he was my favorite for a time, but honestly, I think I could safely put him at top three now. I uh, love this character, Peter Parker's Spider-Man. This is easily the most relatable superhero character, especially growing up. I fell in love with the animated series back in the 90s. Uh, I remember when the Tobey Maguire movie first came out. I was the perfect age, I feel like, you know, that kind of... Uh, late kid, preteen, early era. Uh, but yeah, I just love this character so much. And those were my gateways before I started reading proper comics. I remember one of the first comic collections I bought when I first started buying collections for myself was the uh, Marvel Essentials line for Spider Man, those old black and white reprints. It was the only way at the time I could read those early stories. And I think I read the first maybe 130, 140 issues in that Essential line. Uh, I wanted to get through the death of Gwen Stacy stuff. But anyway, ever since then, I've just been a rabid Spider-Man comic fan. I've been trying to swoop up these omnibuses where I can. Uh, but to showcase the comics today, I have Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. I have a standard size paperback here. I know they just released a big, beautiful gallery edition for those interested. Uh, this really showcases, in my mind, what makes Spider-Man great. It's this beautiful, melancholic reflection on his lost love, the aforementioned Gwen Stacy. And it's basically kind of a flashback story where it's Valentine's Day and he's sort of eulogizing his old love. And we get flashbacks to just his early time in superheroics. We get to see just some of the Spider-Man witticisms, the tragedy, the colorful cast of supporting characters and his notable villains. I think Spider-Man is just a really great character. I love the kind of nerdy, tragic life of Peter Parker, uh, juxtaposed with the kind of high-flying humor of Spider-Man. Uh, he just seems like he can do anything. Honestly, I love this character. He's such a flagship for Marvel Comics in general, and with good reason. And he has one of the best uh, just gallery of villains I've ever seen in comics. Absolutely love the amazing Spider-Man. Number two on my favorite superhero comics list is none other than the Dark Knight himself, Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne, absolutely. This is easily also one of the most iconic superhero characters in the world. And this is a close fight for me. This is my number two, but just barely. I love Batman. I honestly think he has some of the best comics. He has the best comic book kind of miniseries or graphic novels, bar none. Um, I think that for comic book runs, my number one character might edge it out for me. But for like actual graphic novels or collected editions, it's hard to beat the record going with Batman. 
man, there's so many great stories here. Uh, Dark Knight Returns, Year One, Court of Owls. We have just, I mean, it, the list goes on forever. The Long Halloween, The Killing Joke. Like, again, I could just keep going. Under the Red Hood. Yeah, honestly, the, the minutes could just fly by with me naming great story arcs. But I love Batman. Uh, like Captain America or some of these other more human characters, he's just a man. Granted, he has a ton of money, a tragic backstory, but he's really used every advantage he could to forge himself into a weapon in this war against injustice. Um, honestly, I love Batman. He, again, has uh, probably the best rogues gallery of villains. I put him and Spider-Man as having the best villain characters in my mind. Uh, he has a great supporting cast of characters, and also just the Bat family, all of the kind of vigilantes that fight with his cause. Um, I love more modern. Uh, his relationship with Catwoman is a lot of fun for me. I think that's why I love the Tom King run so much on Batman. I love all the Robins. You know, I already had Nightwing on my list, Dick Grayson. Uh, but Batman is just a great character. I love the detective uh, aspects to him. I love when he's in a big team. I like kind of the dark psychological thriller aspects of Batman. Uh, you know, this is a character who could go really, really grim dark or go super campy. You know, see the Adam West era of Batman. Uh, but just an amazing character all around. There's a reason why he is so beloved. And he's easily in my top three. Absolutely. And rounding out my favorite superheroes of all time, we're looking at the man without fear. Of course, I'm talking about Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Daredevil is my favorite superhero. He has been for some time now. I think ever since I read the back-to-backs of Frank Miller and then Brian Michael Bendis' run on the character, I read those runs very close together, and for me, that was the one-two punch that sold me on this character for all time. I think that this character has the most impressive hit list for just consistent comic runs over decades now. You know, I think you could read, going back to probably Kevin Smith's Guardian Devil to current, and almost every Everything is an absolute gem. Some are better than others, but honestly, Daredevil has had such a consistently strong list of creators and just character run now. Uh, it's just incredible. I think that this is another good example of a B-list character who's now starting to get a lot more um, popularity and just uh, you know people looking at him. I think that he's a comics fan character. Uh, love, love, love Daredevil. Uh, for me, I think that he, like Wolverine, has a lot of contradictions that I find super compelling. He's deeply religious and yet dresses like a devil. He's a lawyer who fights for justice by the letter of the law, but then by night goes out as a vigilante. Uh, you know, there's just so many things back and forth with this, you know? He, he's physically blind, and yet in many ways he, air quotes, sees better than so many with his extra radar sense. Um, I love the introduction that Frank Miller gave to this character, reinventing and retconning some of his origin, adding the ninjas, adding Elektra, elevating Kingpin to his arch nemesis, who was once just a Spider-Man villain. Really, really love this whole character. I love the vibe. I love that we get a lot of just gritty crime stories with a lot of great Daredevil runs. I like whenever we're in kind of the courtroom for Matt Murdock, I always think is compelling. And this is a character that also just has a lot of tragedy and just intensity around him. And I find him just absolutely um, compelling. It's just so easy to sink in and get into this character. Uh, my favorite runs are the Brian Michael Bendis run, uh, followed probably by the Mark Wade era. Uh, really love Wade's stuff as well on Daredevil. It's a little bit of a lighter touch, but I think that for people that only expect kind of happy-go-lucky Daredevil, there's so much more to it in Mark Wade's Daredevil. I would definitely encourage you to take a second look if that's put you off from reading it. Um, after that, I also like things like the Frank Miller run, uh, Ed Brubaker, what I've read of the Zdarsky era has been fantastic. Uh, again, there's just so many good runs out there, but love Daredevil. Okay, and that's going to do it today for my top 10 favorite superheroes list. It was fun to do a top 10 that I actually put in a real order. Uh, this is my definitive list for now, but sometimes these rankings could change. I also realized in my zeal for Daredevil, I'm not even sure if I mentioned, I was flipping through The Man Without Fear, which is his incredible origin retelling miniseries from Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. Uh, but at any rate, this has been my favorite superheroes. Uh, I feel pretty confident about this list, and while not all of the books here are the best representation of these characters, they're all books I thoroughly enjoy and want to promote and recommend. Uh, I would love in the comments below, who are your favorite superhero characters? If you want to spend the time, give me your full top 10, or maybe just a couple of your favorites. Uh, let me know if I have any of your same favorites. I'd love to hear from you. I think that this could be a 
really fun and lively discussion. Maybe we can recommend books from some of these characters. Would really love to see that. Uh, and again, thank you to the commenter who helped inspire this video. This was a really big, fun one that I really look forward to putting together for all of you. So I hope you enjoy. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. And until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to give this video a like, your comment, and maybe check out one of my others on your way out. Thanks and have a good one.